Hi, welcome to another Bowlers Mark Coaching Corner. I'm John Gaines, Vice President of Bowlers Mark Bowler Development, and we are coming to you live from Bowlers Mark Merritt Island, inside Shore Lanes. Uh, behind the camera today is <laughs> Manager Anthony Queso. So if you're ever in the Merritt Island area, please come on out and see Anthony for all your bowling needs. Today, what we're going to discuss, we're going to talk a little bit about RGs and differentials. RG is radius of gyration. All those numbers, uh, they're on the manufacturer's website. So if you're trying to look for a ball for yourself and you're just not quite sure, you know, what is RG, what is differential, hopefully today at the end of this session we'll have a little bit better idea of what those numbers actually mean. As you can see on the table here, I brought a couple cores with me. Um, they are older, but I will tell you, core numbers are core numbers. Okay? There's no doubt that there are some different densities and technology upgrades, but most of that's going to come in, in, in the form of the cover, which we've discussed in the past is 70% of your bowling ball motion. This is a hammer-powered diesel core. Uh, actually, I, I brought this out because it was actually one of my favorite balls uh, when, I, when I worked for uh, Ebonite International. Uh, the power diesel core, the RG radius gyration was 2.54 and the differential was 048. But what does that actually <laughs> mean, right Anthony? Exactly. You know, um, basically what radius of gyration is, is how fast an object will spin. If you think of an ice skater, when they put their arms out, they spin slow. If they bring their arms in, they will spin a little bit faster. This is the uh, Hammer Vicious. Again, I have that ball. It's one of my favorite balls when, when uh, Hammer made a, uh, that kind of came back on the marketplace. The Vicious is a little bit higher RG. It's 2.51 and the differential is 058. So what is differential? Differential, kind of make it the, maybe easy and not so technical, is kind of basically the difference between the height and width of the core. All right. The true measurement is the difference between the x-axis and the y-axis, but again, unless you're a mathematician and Anthony's laughing because... We're not in school anymore, so... <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, it is the difference in measurement between the x-axis and the y-axis. However, in this case, if we kind of look at a little bit more of, of, of kind of a height and width, it may, may, might make it a little bit easier. So, in this case, with, with, the, uh, with the vicious, the vicious core is going to be a little bit taller than it is wider it's going to be more unstable. So when your bowling ball comes back up off the bar return, you can see uh, different oil rings on your bowling ball. Basically that's flare, and what's creating that flare is differential. The differential makes the ball unstable, and it literally wants to topple over, wants to get to a stable axis position. We've got a question from Ralph. Uh, so the lower RG, uh, the lower the RG, the faster the ball spins or hooks? Correct, with a given force and the given force being the bowler, the lower the RG, the faster that ball will actually spin off the hand. So if it actually spins a little bit faster off the hand, it's going to roll a little bit sooner. So a low RG ball will roll a little bit sooner, and a higher RG ball will get further down the lane. So how does that correspond to you, the bowler? Well, if, if your rev rate's not very high, but your ball speed is, so you throw it pretty hard and don't have a lot of rev rate or a lot of rotation, um, you would maybe want to go with a little bit lower RG ball. Okay, that, that'll get the ball rolling a little bit sooner. Mm -hmm. um, if you're bowling on maybe some drier lanes, you would actually want to go the opposite way. So if you're bowling, if you're a tournament player and the lanes start to break down, you're, you're going to start to look for a little bit higher RG ball because the higher RG ball will push the ball down the lane a little bit further through the first 15, 20 feet where the lane uh, uh, starts to see the greatest amount of, uh, of change from the oil being picked up off on, on the bowling ball. Okay? All right. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about layouts again. <laughs> um, again, find your favorite layout and stick with it. The, the, the guys and the ladies on tour, in general, only have two layouts. That's really all they use. Okay. What they do is they find core numbers that work for them. They find an RG and a differential that really work for their game, and then they try to stay within that range, okay? And then they'll take the, the, the two layouts that, that are favorite for them and, and kind of apply those. So instead of trying to outguess a bowling ball and, and, and 
kind of trick it out or trick layout or put a hole way over here, way over here. You know, sometimes you just kind of out guessing what the ball is really meant to do. Doesn't mean that that can't happen. Another bowling ball I brought with me today, uh, this is my, uh, my Alpha Crux. I specifically mm. drilled this for nationals. And the core numbers on this are 250 RG, 052 differential, and 017 mass fives. Normally, an 017 mass five fall for me is really strong. Normally, the asymmetric falls just don't roll that well for me. Why don't you explain a little bit about what the mass bias means? Since we talked about RG and differential, that's a right. third number right. the, that the, they probably want to know about. Right. The mass bias is, is, is the third number in the equation. You'll, in this one, I actually drilled right through uh, the mass bias with my thumb. Uh, an asymmetrical ball with a mass bias rating of 010 or higher, and I say uh, 010 or higher because this is actually a cyclone core. The cyclone core, it is an asymmetric core. However, the mass bias rating is very, very low. It's less than 010, and therefore on cyclones, you don't see that third locator. So you have the pin, you'll have the CG, and then you'll have a mass bias on an asymmetric core normally uh, if it's 010 or higher. On this particular ball, again, normally these balls don't roll very good for me. However, I drilled this ball specifically for nationals simply because even though the pattern wasn't a really long pattern, uh, it was only third, well, the team event and the and doubles and singles, one pattern was 38 feet, one pattern was 39 feet, the volume of oil was still very high. So I needed something to really roll early and, and not really go sideways in the back end. Um, that's one of the things that Anthony and I as pro shop technicians deal with quite a bit is we'll get a, a customer come in or a bowler come in and say, hey, you know, what kind of reaction are you looking for? And what do they normally say, Anthony? A lot of length, a lot of back end. And guess what? For <laughs> us, that's actually the last thing I want. I don't want my ball to look like a, a hockey stick. I don't want it to go this way and then this way. It looks really cool, but I will tell you, it's very hard to control. And at the end of the day, your pin carry is actually not going to be very good. So I specifically drilled this ball for national, so I needed a really strong cover. I needed a really strong core. However, the way I laid it out, I only put the pin two inches from my positive axis point. And what that did was really help me control the back end of the lane. So the ball got into a heavy roll. It picked up in the mid lane because of the differential, but I laid it out to not go sideways. I will also tell you, I use this ball for exactly one game. <laughs> and that, but that was the idea. At Nationals, they are very difficult, very tricky to start. What did you see when you, when you had to get away from that? What did the bowling ball start to do? It really, what I would call labored going down the lane. Um, it, it, it was. It, it just didn't make a move. It got really lazy down the lane. It looked good for about 40 feet and then just kind of laid over uh, a two pin or a, 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 for me right hand, it, 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 it was kind of two pin or bucket or even flat ten. So from there I went to a black uh, legend solid and it gave me just a little bit more. Still a fairly strong core and, and a fairly strong cover but less than what the Alpha Crux is and gave me just a little bit of extra continuation. So again, this ball here, it rolled perfect. It got my partner and I, Matt Barber, to a 17th place finish at Nationals this year. And anybody that bowls Nationals, uh, there's about 6,000 teams, and there's going to be approximately 11 to 12,000 doubles teams. And my partner and I got to a 17th place finish. I am more than satisfied That's with that. That's not too shabby at all. And, and the Alpha Crux is, uh, I'm going to tell you, that ball got, got me started. It got me off to a really good start. I shot 230 the first game. And anybody that bowled nationals this year, especially in doubles, they were hard. Uh -huh. 30 the first game, it was, I, I was extremely happy. That's a confidence booster, and the fresh is usually pretty tricky. Correct. Even if you break them down right, you still got to go out there and get them the first game. Correct. So what that would look like, so if we start kind of breaking these down, um, Anthony and I, as, as pro shop technicians, when we drill balls, we really look at anywhere from zero to six and three quarters. And in degree angles, that would be anywhere from zero degrees to 90 degrees. So if we look at this vicious here, and this pin is, is right on top, if I put that pin six and three quarters from my positive axis point, that's gonna put it at a 90 degree angle in relation to my CAP over here, okay? This alpha crux is literally, it, it was only two inches from my CAP. So what that actually does, I don't have the alpha crux core, but what that'll actually look like, that core angle is now laid over like this. Okay, so there's very little wobble. It's going to be very much in a roll. This would be a low RG position. This would be a high RG position. Okay, so 
Anthony and I at Ball Drillers, we can really change the shape of the ball as it goes down the lane by how we change that core shape. So again, in the alpha crux, about two inches from my TAP, that's about what it would look like as it would go down the lane. Very little wobble, very little flare. Even for someone with a high rev rate, you can still make a bowling ball very smooth by taking the core and laying it down yeah. in such a manner. Absolutely. And again, in this case, normally what I would do is I would take a much weaker ball. In the past, I'd use an arson low flare to start at nationals. Um, that arson and arson low flare, that core cover combination, it's a lower RG core, not much differential, and the ball would really roll. However, uh, the past two years, El Paso and then uh, Reno, last year, Reno, Reno mm -hmm. um, the back ends were, were really, really sharp. There, there was a lot of back end motion, but again, the volume was a little bit higher, so I needed, I needed that stronger core than what I would normally see with, with the uh, arson or arson low flare. Any questions popping up? Uh, uh, no, a lot of people watching. Not really anybody shooting out some questions. Okay. So, I mean, uh, I'll go ahead and start it off with um, what would your typical layout look like? I mean, two inches was would be a you know a pretty, I wouldn't say right. trick layout, but that's more to get the ball to roll. Right. What's something, a layout that you use to get so it my, to be? My two main layouts. Um, my two main layouts, one is pin above the fingers with no extra hole, and that puts the pin at, at five inches for my PAP. And then I have another where I put the pin below my middle, and that's about five and a half for my PAP. So the pin above with, with no hole and the pin below, and, I, and then usually what I'll do is with a small shift and a small hole. Now, that brings up another point, <laughs> pin up and pin down. Anthony and I were talking about this uh, a little <laughs> while ago. We're, we're both in agreement. I'm going to tell you, there's really not a whole lot of difference between a pin up above the fingers and a pin below the fingers if the pin distance to axis is the same. Correct. So if I were to put a pin up above my fingers at five inches, and then I would put one below at five inches, I'm going to tell you they would virtually roll the same. Now, if I put one way up higher, yes, it's going to. What it's actually going to do to the pin on the on the diesel core would be right here. So if I put that pin just above my fingers, it's going to it's going to drill into the into the core like this. If I put it just below my fingers, it's going to drill into the core like this. If I put it way above my fingers, it would actually lop off the top half of, of, of the uh, of the core here. So it is going to be a little bit different if it's very high or very low. Um, in general, if it's just above or just below, I'm going to argue with anybody that I'm telling you, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. The core axis angle, the distance you put the pin to your PAP is way more important than a little bit above or a little bit of below. Now, depending on your ball track, if you're a very high track player, yes, you want to put the pin above the fingers, and it's not so much for ball motion wise as much as to keep the flare, the, the flare rings off your fingers. Because as the ball flares for a right hander, it's going to flare clockwise. So if your fingers are here and that ball's flaring clockwise, the flare rings will follow the pin. So if you put that pin below your fingers, it will actually bring those flare rings lower and you will clip the middle hole if you're a high enough rev rate player and, you're, and your track is high enough. We got a couple of questions coming in. Um, uh, Joseph is wondering, so what do you look for to change when your ball motion is starting to labor? What's the first thing you look at uh, to help your ball reaction? I'm, I'm going to look for, if you're talking specifically about the core, you're going to go to a little bit higher RG core. Okay, so you, you, can, you can keep the differential because the differential will help the ball continue in the back end. Um, but I would definitely maybe look for a little higher RG core. And also, I'm also looking for a weaker cover. The cover, again, is going to be about 70% of your ball motion. If we, if we could really get bowlers to start looking more at their cover and cover prep and cover maintenance, their scores would be higher, and I'm going to tell you more consistent. Agreed. Um, when I, when I, again, when I, uh, I've been working in the industry for several years, and one of the things I used to get all the time when I bowled PBA regionals, a new ball would come out, we'd talk about it, and the first thing he'd ask is, "How should I lay it out? Uh, what is your favorite layout?" Well, it's this, but I'm not sure that'll work. If that favorite layout is not going to work, I'm going to tell you that ball's not for you. It, it's just not for you. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to decide what ball is best for me? That's coming from David Quillen. That is, uh, 
what's best for you, again, and you're kind of looking behind me here, and there's, there's quite a few balls in the wall. Um, there are a lot of bowling balls in the market. Um, if you already have your own ball, um, we, we talked last week about that benchmark ball, something right in the middle. Um, this is where I would go to, to your pro shop technician uh, in, in your home center and just say, hey, you know, this is what I already have and I need something to fill in here, you know, in, in, in this position here. So uh, when I was bowling out on tour, we would try to have a sequence of balls. I'd have one here, one here, one here, one here. On occasion, I'd have one here, one here, and then one over here, and I needed to fill in that sequence because I don't want too big of a gap. First thing I would look at is, can I change surfaces? Can I maybe take this one and move it this way and take this one and move it this way to get them a little closer together? If not, then I'm looking to drill a ball, I'm gonna fill that hole. Um, if you don't have any equipment, you're literally just starting out, you're a new bowler, something right in the middle. You, you, you don't need to go out and spend $230, $240 on a brand new ball on the high end. Um, something right in the middle, um, an IQ Tour Solid, uh, Game Breaker 2. Um, uh, you can go with like a Daredevil, uh, kind of the, the bowling balls you see in your local pro shop right around the 180, price point drill. Those correct. are going to be those are going to be right in the middle. They're going to give you a lot of price, a lot of hook and uh, performance for the money. They're not going to break the bank, and you're probably going to be pretty happy and, with and that. And you're going to be happy with that's that. What, so, that's what we want. Right, so somewhere, you know, somewhere right in the middle is kind of what you're looking at. Agreed. Uh, Scott Urban, what's the best medium heavy big hooking bowling ball for a stroker? He's looking at uh, four bowling balls, uh, a Code Black, a No Rules Pearl, an Alpha Crux, or a Snap Lock. Well, if you're looking for heavy roll, you got the No Rules correct. They I'm do have not, a Pearl one coming out. Right, but I'm not sure the Pearl. Uh, ball speed? Uh, he's, he hasn't really said much of that. Um, for me, I mean, if we're looking for, I mean, the strongest bowling ball that you mentioned out of those four as far as how early it's going to roll would be that uh, that alpha crux, just because of the cutter. Right. Now, but what you need to understand is we need to break the lane down. Do you really need it to roll earlier, or are you looking for more back end motion? Because mm -hmm. that is one of the, again, we'll get that question quite a bit. I need more hook. First thing I'm going to ask is, where on the lane do you need more hook? Do you need it to really roll earlier, or do you just need more back end motion? Okay, so if you are looking for a much earlier rolling ball, a no rules, the solid, yeah. or an alpha crux, that's kind of what you look for. However, if you're looking for a little bit more back end motion, that's where that code black, code black, snap lock, those balls really snap lock quite a bit in the back. Yeah, uh, or or that no rules pearl when it comes out, those are maybe balls you're looking at. You know, that's going a little bit further, a little bit more back end. So the question I would have for you is, are you looking for a ball to truly roll earlier or hook more, or you just need more back end? All right, uh, we have a question from Jason Connor. What do you change if you're controlling the pocket but constantly leaving corner pins? Okay, corner pins. It, again, here we go. <laughs> what it, kind? It, it, what kind of <laughs> corner pins? And, I, and I, it is that technical. Is it a flat ten or a ring ten? I'm, and I, I'm, again, I'm going to assume you're right-handed and apologize, and Anthony's <laughs> left-handed, so <laughs> we can um, flip it. If, if it's a flat ten or a ring ten, a flat ten is when the six pin just lays in the gutter. Your ball hits the pocket and it looks awful. It's a bluff. It, it doesn't do anything. Okay. It rolls down there, it looks good, it looks good, and hits the pocket, and it hits, it hits like a marshmallow, okay? That would be a flat pen. If you're leaving a flat pen, you're going to look for something a little bit shinier, uh, a little bit higher RG, um, uh, maybe a little bit more axis rotation with your hand. Sometimes it's just a matter of changing your hand rotation, get a little more around the side of the ball, get the ball to kick a little bit more in the back end, uh, a little more angular in the back end. As far as layouts and cores, what would you change? Let, since we're, that's the kind of the topic. If, okay. if, let's let's assume that you know we're really close and we want to kind of change balls rather than change hands or speeds for a flat ten ring ten. What would okay. you if, if it's a flat ten again, it's still going to be higher RG, but now we're going to use a little higher RG layout. So again, using this core, if we take that pen and put it closer to our PAT, that's a lower RG layout. That's going to get the ball to roll sooner. If you're leaving a uh, flat pen, you'd actually want to go the other way. You want to get that pen further away from your PAP. That is a higher RG layout. It's going to save a little bit more energy down the lane and have a little bit more continuation in the back end. The other way, if you're leaving a ring 10, a ring 10 is when the ball is going a little bit too far down the lane and it needs to roll just a little bit sooner. You can use a little bit more surface. You can get a little bit more off the back and a little bit more end over end. Or layout wise, we're talking about cores. You'd want to get that pin just a little bit laid down, not a lot, you know, maybe closer to three and a half, four inches to your PAP. 
uh, and, and then that'll also increase the differential, and that differential will help the ball drive through the, the, the pins a little better. So a flat 10 would be a little higher RG layout, 10 further away, or a ring 10, you're looking to get that uh, core a little bit closer to your PAP, a little bit stronger to get the ball to roll sooner and, and also still continue to the Awesome, spin. awesome. Uh, we got a question from Michael. What's the best pearl ball with the most roll? My axe rotation is very aggressive, even with less aggressive layouts. Best pearl ball. <laughs> here, and here we go with, with uh, look, looking for specific balls. <laughs> what do you already have? Because again, a pearlized ball, that, 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 that can go from the low end. That can go from that viral right there to the left of you, and that can go, the code black is pearl. Right, I mean, right, or, or like a new no rolls. Again, yeah. you know, we're, that is a wide variety of core, core combinations, so uh, I would need a little bit more information of what best would, would be best for you. Yeah, a lot, I get this question a lot in the pro shop. People come in and ask me what the best bowling ball is, and I, I have to tell them there really is no best bowling ball. I mean, it's all conditional for you and what we're bowling on. You know, I could sell, I could be throwing the uh, a code black and it looks really good for me Correct. in my game, but Correct. you being a high rev rate player, and a little bit firmer than uh, yeah, it may not well, look the best for you. So that's to put a label of best on bowling balls. I don't think it's fair anymore because there's just so many and every, it seems like all the bowling balls now are really good. It's just right. matter what you're using them on. You have to take what you already have and look to fill in a hole. Okay. So if, if you're a higher rev rate player um, and, and maybe your ball speed is still average and this is the sequence of balls you have and they're on this end, now you're going to fill in a pearl down on this end. If, if the balls that you have are, are, are pretty strong and you're looking for that pearlized ball, you're going to fill that pearlized ball on, on the higher end on, on a little bit bigger core, uh, bigger differential, uh, and especially the mass bias rate. Uh, we have a question from Jack, he, uh, I need to get a bowling ball through the heads a lot. I get the ball into a roll pretty early, and I need something to get through the heads. I've got a gold rhino drilled 60 by 5 by 50. Okay. That's awesome. He knows his layout. Yeah. Uh, basically, you would be looking to actually put that pin you know, e even further. Okay, so if you have a uh, 60 by 60 by 5 by five, 50. So, you know, don't be afraid to maybe go 5.5 or even 6 inches. Uh, on that layout because you're going to use a little bit higher RG layout to help get that ball down the lane a little bit easier. Agreed. And even maybe just a little bit higher RG bowling ball too if you really are having... Start. Yeah, exactly. Start. If you're having that much issue, changing the layout Correct. and going a little higher yeah, RG. Definitely get something in that 252, 253 range. Uh, again, all that information is on each manufacturer's website. You can go on any manufacturer's website, uh, look up that particular ball you have a question with or about, and uh, all those numbers will be right on the website. This is a question for you. Uh, you would remember this bowling ball. I don't quite remember. Uh, with today's new bowling balls out, what ball is more comparable to the Overdrive by Columbia? Uh, you, as balls have progressed, um, <laughs> the one good thing is is that the older balls are going to, you know, what, what a $200 bowling ball was or $180 bowling ball was, you know, seven, eight, ten years ago really is now a $139 bowling ball. Um, a Cyclone, for instance. That'd be, be really close, you know, I think. Would be kind of something I, I think that would kind of work out. Uh, the fortunate thing is that ball is $139, yeah. you know, drilled. Uh, and I don't, I'm not trying to quote any prices. That, that is what bowl is marked. You know, it's $139 you know, dollars drilled. Um, you know, so you're going to get something like an overdrive, which was a pretty strong ball back in its day, but with today's advancements in technology, you're really looking at something like uh, maybe a cyclone or a storm line. Something, something like a like a high road or something like that. Even that's a little weaker, or but is, or even a little less than a high road. Yeah, you could probably go with something like a like a match solid or something like that in our right. lower end line. Right. You know, it's still got a pretty strong cover, and I mean, it's it's a modern day bowling ball. Correct. Yeah, so that that would probably be actually pretty good, I think. Correct. Um, Andrew, uh, other than having a spare ball, what three balls would you say a bowler should have in reference to difference in RG and differential? First of all, you want to go with that benchmark ball. Okay, so you, you have your spare ball. Benchmark ball for me, um, the, the Game Breaker 2 and the IQ Tour Solid. Um, mm -hmm. those, are, those really give <laughs> Home me Home runs. A very good read on the lanes, especially the IQ, IQ Tour Solid. Again, my rib rate's a little higher. The differential on that's only 0.38, so it doesn't it doesn't flare a lot. And these are all 15 pound um, uh, numbers. 
Uh, they do vary from, from weight to weight, from 16 to 15 to 14 and so on down the line. Um, the different densities and then how they construct bowling balls, it does change those four numbers. Uh, so all the numbers we're quoting today are 15 pounds. So the IQ score solid, you know, you're, 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 uh, that's 038, that's going to kind of fall uh, right in the middle for me. And then from there, the Game Breaker 2 is going to be, it's kind of for me, benchmark is kind of 1A, 1B. Um, so the Game Breaker 2 is just a little bit higher on that ball, so it is going to, it is going to kick just a little bit harder. I can pretty much tell within two or three shots of, of kind of what I'm looking at, uh, ball, ball wise. Again, you know, how much should we differ? My grouping is pretty small. In general, I'm not using too many balls in, in the, in the in differential wise. I'm not using too many bowling balls higher than 050 because they flare too much for me. I'm usually trying to find balls around the 040s uh, and then even down to what the IQ score solid at 038 because that's what works for me. It, it's not that I don't, it's not that I haven't used other balls. The original Black Widow, mm -hmm. 058. Home run. Stuff. It, it just, it, it did match up for me. You know, strong mass bias, strong, you know, strong core. But that core cover accommodation really worked for me as well as a lot of other people. But in general, I actually, I don't really change once I, I have found my own numbers. I haven't changed those very much. I change the cover more than anything else. We got a pretty long question come in here, so I'll read it out here. Going into cores, I have a symmetrical bowling ball that is really not responding down lane for me. The ball is revving up in the front, which is really labors down lane. I've altered altered surface and added a small hole, and haven't seen uh, really much in a, really much change. What are some other options to help increase down lane ball reaction? Down lane ball motion. Okay, this this was actually kind of easy for, for me. You know, if, if you have a symmetrical core and it's a little lazy and it's kind of too much arc and you look for something to, to kick a little bit harder, find an asymmetrical core. And I, I think it's really that easy. I would almost take, not almost, I would actually take the same layout that you're already using in that symmetrical core. And if you're just looking for just a little bit more back end motion, um, find a, a, an asymmetrical, you know, an asymmetrical ball. Uh, keep the, probably keep the, the, the cover somewhat shiny mm -hmm. to help it still get down the lane. But I think just by going to a higher differential and an asymmetrical, you'll get that little bit more kick in the back end that you're looking for where the symmetrical is a little bit lazy. Uh, another one here, let's see. Coming in from Paul. I seem to have more luck with lower RG uh, differential symmetrical uh, type cores. The Candy Cane Vibe, uh, the XR Vibe, actually that's one of our bowling yeah, balls. Are any, I'm going to tell you, any Vibe core, it's good stuff. Uh, the pin is in the ring finger. I just bought the Ice Vibe XR and have been told that the pin under may be the best for me in that ball for a controlled but strong hook. What what do you recommend? See, you're already, and this is where I go back to is that 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 vibe core. That vibe core is already going to give you that controlled look that you, that you're talking about. Um, when you're putting that ring finger right through the pin, what you're doing is you're lowering the differential even more, but you're also lowering the RG. Okay, so by lowering the differential, that's going to keep it from really kicking in the back and make it controlled. And then by lowering the RG, it's also going to make it roll even sooner. Uh, and, and then have it even more control over the bowling ball. So don't get so concerned again with the layout. If you like the vibe core, that vibe core is a certain number, and it's already going to give you that controlled layout. Uh, this is from Walt. What is the advantage, if any, to drilling a ball pin under versus pin up? Okay, pin up and pin down. Um, kind of talked about this a little bit. The pin up and pin down, unless it's a huge difference, and I mean pin way up or pin way below. If we keep the core axis angle the same, let's just say we put the pin five inches from your PAP, I believe that's 70 degrees uh, in, in a core axis angle. <laughs> Excuse me, if you put that pin five inches, if you put it five inches and it's above your fingers and you put it five inches and it's below your fingers, the reaction really, the, the reaction difference is really gonna be marginal. There are gonna be a lot of pro shop operators out there, oh no, no, it's a huge difference, the pin below makes it roll sooner, it does. The pin above does make it go a little bit longer. It is marginal. So if you're looking for just to tweak something really small, absolutely pin up and pin down. That's going to be a big difference. If you're looking to create a, um, a much uh, different reaction from what you already have, pin up to pin down is not really going to change it a whole lot. You're looking to, to, to really change the core, how the strength of the core, making it a, a weaker core to start or a stronger core to start. Um, it, 
it almost, if the core numbers don't match up to how you throw the ball, I'm going to tell you it almost doesn't matter how you throw it. <laughs> it's not going to roll good yeah. in, in general, okay? Again, I go back to the alpha correction, and, and normally I, I personally, if my rev rate's high and what I bowl on it, I personally wouldn't use this ball very often. However, I did trick the layout, if you will, and put it two inches from my TAP to really help control the back end. But again, keep in mind how much I use it. I use it for, for one game. I also use this on short patterns when, when I'm bowling at home. Um, the, the, the shorter patterns, I say short patterns, something less than 36 feet, 36 feet or less, because um, again, you need the ball to roll and not poke in the back end. So something like this, this type of layout, this ball also rolls good on that. But at Nationals, it was really meant for a specific reason. So don't get so caught up in that pin up or pin down. Yeah, like we talked about, cover is going to make a, a bigger difference. Cover 70% of the ball motion, you're going to see the biggest difference in cover. Now, again, you, you, you can see some big difference in ball to ball motions with the core numbers that you start with. There's no doubt a ball that is, you know, 058 is going to roll a lot different than an 038. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a, it's a very it's different. A huge difference. So you you can. It's just looking for those numbers first. Don't be so concerned with the layout. Find the core that matches for what you're looking for. If you're looking for sp specific motion, don't get so wrapped up in the layout all the time. Look for the core numbers that that, that match up for what you're looking for. Perfect. Uh, this is more of a comment, not really so much a question, but uh. Coming in from John, he said, uh, wouldn't the actual cover stock type, the materials it's made out of, mean more than the actual RG numbers, such as hybrid, solid, that's, pearl? That's, and we, absolutely. Yeah, literally yeah, just that's, touched on that. Absolutely. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's at least 70% of the ball motion. So depending on what the cover is made of, you know, the hybrid, pearl, and, and, and so on, solid cover, so on and so on. Um, absolutely. The, the, the cover is the most important part of the bowling ball. It's just that we find in the pro shops, everybody's first... They're so, they're, they're so much concerned about the layout, and I'm going to tell you the layout is probably, of all things that you can kind of go into a bowling ball and what you can do, the layout is probably the last thing that somebody like, uh, you know, Anthony or myself kind of look at. We're looking to make sure the cover and then the core match up for, for what you're looking for. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have to outguess the layout. Mm -hmm. you, Agreed. Whatever the layout has worked for you in the past. Again, if you're, if, if you're having to really think about that and outguess what the bowling ball is going to do or meant to do, it's not the right bowling ball. Agreed. No. Agreed. Uh, I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and uh, kind of throw a question out there. Um, we touched on uh, extra holes earlier. Yep. Um, go ahead and why don't we get into a little bit about what, what they can do to a bowling ball. The, again, we, we can dramatically change the shape of the bowling ball uh, depending on where we put those holes. Uh, how big those holes are, and then how deep those holes are. Um, you know, looking at this power diesel core again, you know, it's 254048. This, this, this is where the pin would be. Um, if, I, if I start to drill uh, my fingers into the ball here, it, it's going to lower, you know, again, it's going to lower that dip, it's going to lower the RG a little bit. But let's say I want to lower the uh, dip, and, and I kind of put, the, put the, my fingers going in the core this way, or excuse me, lower the RG, but then I want to raise the dip, we can actually take an extra hole and put it down below and knock off just the, the edge of the core. And we're, act, we're again, we're going to lower it going this way, but then we're going to narrow it going this way. So we've lowered the RGs, but we've also increased the differential. So you, you can really dramatically change those numbers uh, depending on where you put those holes. Uh, I'm going to tell you as probably as much as 20 or 25 points we, we can really oh, yeah. change. If you put a big uh, enough hole in it, yeah. You know, in, in, in something like the Alpha Crux, um, that Alpha Crux, the 052 differential, uh, but the Mass Bias at 017, if I were to take a, a, an extra hole and I were to put it down by my thumb there, uh, and I made it a pretty big hole into the nade, and I drilled it three inches deep, um, I'm going to tell you, it's going to raise that differential by as much as 20, 25 points. You can get up to 040 pretty quick. You can, well, it's 052 to start. No, I meant the, the intermediate. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. and even changing the mass bias. Um, the, the maximum USBC is 036. Correct. Um, you can actually even raise that mass bias rating, make the ball that much stronger uh, down the lane by where you put those holes. You know, USBC. I think it's, I know there's a lot of arguments out there right now. I'm going to tell you, I think USBC is doing a great job. Um, 
Chad Murphy, the executive director, he's kind of getting picked on a little bit right now about some certain some certain items. He's been the first person that has actually stood up uh, in, in, in quite a long time and said, no, nope, you know what, this is the rules and you know, we'll look, if it's not a good rule, we'll look at it going forward, but right now this is the rule and it's going to be enforced. And, you know, and, and that's the way it is. And to me, that, that hasn't happened very much in the past. So uh, I owe kudos to, to Chad and, and his staff. I, again, I think they're doing a pretty good job. Uh, just, just give him some time down there. He, he, he's done some great things down there. Yeah, we need the regulations. Uh, obviously, there's got to be rules in place. Right, right. So, you know, even though even though we're going to make this fall um, legal after drilling, that's not the way the rule reads. The, the way the rule reads is an undrilled bowling ball. The maximum differential is 060. You got to start somewhere. You have to have a number to start with somewhere. So we can raise and lower that, but that's where that starting number is. Is maximum differential is 060. Uh, it's a question from Trevor. What is the best hybrid ball for medium to heavy uh, patterns right around 40 to 41 feet? <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Uh, it, we've been saying it the whole time. It really is depending on what you have already and what you're looking to fill. Uh, you need to have a couple bowling balls and we need to fill gaps. We can't just say this is the best bowling ball because it may not be the best ball for you. It's so it's not that arbitrary. Yeah, it has to fit your game, your arsenal, Correct. your bowling we, center. We, we, uh, you know, and if you want to fire in another question, we'd be happy to kind of narrow it down, but we need no, we, we need more data. We need to fill it in. What do you already have? What are you looking to fill in? What kind of hole are you looking to fill in? And if we don't get to it here, um, those of you who have already sent me questions, you know, even after our, our live cast, I've gone back and, and answered every single question that I didn't get to on the live cast. Mm -hmm. So if you want to send me an email, it's at jgaines at bowersmart.com, J, the letter J, G-A-I-N-E-S, jgaines at bowersmart.com. I'm on Facebook. You can send me a private message there. I'll be more than happy to answer your question. You can send it to the, you know, the Bowersmart Coaching Corner. Be happy to answer any of those questions. Same with me, guys. If you guys want, you know, I'm on Facebook. You know, it's, I'm pretty easy to find. My last name is pretty uncommon, so you can just send me a message, and we can we can both More than do anything for you. To help you out. Uh, we got a question for Paul Anderson. So, is the fact that I rev the bowling ball a ton the reason that low RG symmetric bowling balls work more for me? Over the larger core asymmetric bowling balls, absolutely. like a like a Black Widow gas mask core type thing. A hundred percent, absolutely. That you know, in general, if you're a higher rev rate, normally your ball speed is also going to be a little bit higher. So that lower RG for the higher speed is what works, and then with a higher rev rate, um, that symmetrical core is why it works. So yes, to answer your question, that is why it is working for you. The the uh, lower RG symmetrical cores in general for the uh, higher rev rate, higher speed players. I'm the same way. Again, one of my favorite balls of all, all time was the Hammer Arson, and that kind of fits that, you know, that, that symmetrical low RG ball. Yeah, the low RG core gets into roll pretty early, tames down the back end, and then symmetrical, same thing. Also, it, creates a very smooth motion. Right, right. And, and the same thing with the IQ Tour Solid. I mean, there's a reason that ball's been in line for how many years? Uh, it's four, so, going on four now. Uh, four, it came out in 2012, so it's yeah. going on almost five years now. Yeah, it's, the IQ, IQ Tour Solid. Uh, yeah, it's a home run. I have reason that ball's in the line still. I'll say if when that ball gets discontinued, I might have to retire. <laughs> <laughs> um, nothing else firing in now, so uh, let's go ahead and talk about, I mean, what do you think the next thing we need to talk about is? I mean, uh, oh, Paul says thank you. <laughs> yeah, same time. Uh, all right, uh, there is still a lot of bowlers who have not gotten new equipment for quite some time. Is it legal to bowl with bowling balls that don't have the USB-C engraved markings? I'm actually yeah, not sure about that. Everything has been grandfathered, so and, and so we're still okay in that. So if you're using a ball, I mean, I, I will tell you, I still have a Turbo X at home. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a gem. From, from from 1992, three, uh, somewhere around that yeah. time frame. Um, I still bring that out on occasion. I'm gonna tell you, it still rolls unbelievable. Uh, it's a simple light bulb, symmetrical shaped core. And it still rolls unbelievable, but that ball would still be legal to you. So pretty much because there were so many bowling balls being made um, prior to, those balls are still legal to use today. Same thing like a bowling ball that doesn't meet the USB-C core specifications now. You can still drill it and throw it. You just it can no longer be manufactured. It can no longer be, the technical rule is it can no longer be manufactured. Yeah, right? you if you're throwing a bowling ball out there that. Diff or RG doesn't match, you're fine. You're not going to get in any Correct. kind of trouble. And then go, you know, 
you know, look at that uh, the original you know, the original game breaker. Yep, two I was two four five and fifteen and two four four and yeah, fourteen. The, so the it was really now, low. Yeah, the number now is two forty six is as low as you can go. So but that ball would still be legal to drill and throw today, it just can no longer be manufactured. How does axis rotation and tilt come into play when symmet uh, selecting symmetrical versus asymmetrical? Okay, so good question there. Uh, axis rotation, to, to kind of clarify and define, axis rotation is the orientation of the ball off your hand, and end over end would be zero degrees of axis rotation, and if it goes completely sideways, which nobody is, is that much, <laughs> Pete Weber might be the closest. Pete's going to be probably that 60, 65. Uh, degree of axis rotation, mm -hmm. he really gets around the side of the ball and he creates a lot of side rotation. And okay, so the ball gets down the lane pretty easy for him. Right. I would say to, to give people a clarification, like a Pete Weber would be a lot of axis rotation right. and someone they can relate to on Norm tour. Duke. Norm Duke. I was going to say even Chris Barnes. Or, or, Bar Cr or Barnes, yeah. yeah you know, the, Chris is very much off the back of the ball. He, he really wants to control the pocket. Walter Ray, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they really want to control the pocket. One of the ways of doing that is less axis rotation. So, the less the less axis rotation, you're actually going to look for a little higher RG ball because the end over end, less axis rotation, gets the ball into a roll fairly early. You don't need a ball to roll any earlier. So as we discussed, the low RG ball is going to get the ball to roll early. So the, the lesser the axis rotation, the higher the RG. Now Pete, on the other hand, he's kind of a, a combination of, even though he's a lot of axis rotation, his ball speed is still pretty slow. He actually uses, in general, he'll use a lower RG ball to get the ball to, to roll for him because he gets around the side so much that he he can get the ball down the lane. I don't think the ball, I don't think the lane's ever hooked too much for Pete. Never. I, I mean, I've been watching. I've been even when I was a little kid watching Pete ball. I don't ever remember him having a problem getting the ball down the lane. So he will use a ball with a little bit lower RG. So the more axis rotation, um, you're going to use a little bit lower RG and less axis rotation, higher RG. And it's going to be kind of similar for, for tilt. The higher your tilt is, okay, the higher your tilt, you're going to use lower RG. The lower your tilt, you're going to use less RG. Okay? Makes sense to me. Okay. Uh, Kenneth Bright, can you give me the actual numbers for low RG, high RG? Like, I guess, what would you consider yeah, low, can, yeah, we high? Kind of we can kind of middle it in there. You know, the 246 is as low as you can go. You know, you're looking at that 246, maybe 248 is going to be low RG, uh, even 249. Um, anything, you know, like 250 to 252 is kind of in the middle. I agree. And then uh, 252 and higher, 254, 256, that's definitely going to be in the higher RG uh, categories. And then differential, uh, the maximum number is 060. Mm -hmm. Uh, high dip is about 0.52 and higher. Mm -hmm. 0.52 to 0.60 would be a high differential ball. Um, anything in the mid 40 to that 52 would be kind of in the middle of the road uh, as far as for a differential. And anything lower than 0.44, 0.42, anything lower than that would be considered low differential. So like the IQ Tour style of being 0.38, that's Ar gonna be a lower dip ball. Arson low flare, things like that. Correct. Yeah, Correct. lower flaring. Um, Rick Doyle, uh, I would like, I want to add a pin down ball to my bag. I have some undrilled balls, but they're all three to four pins. Is that okay, or is a two to three pin best? It's actually funny, me and him had a conversation about this earlier. De depending, depending on your span, mm. okay, the span's going to come into play on this. Yeah. My, my span, I have a fairly long span, my total span is five and a quarter inches. So for me to put the pin below the fingers is actually pretty easy, even though it might be a three, three and a half inch pin. I can get it below my fingers pretty easy. If your span's going to be more normal, you know, like, <laughs> you know, four and a quarter, four and a half, maybe four and five eighths, um, if you're looking to put the pin below, you would be better off trying to find a two or three inch pin uh, out of the box to, to start. It's not that you can't. Um, if it is a taller pin, now you're talking about you would have to, because of the CG and where the CG would fall, the center of gravity you would have to stick an extra hole in the ball, which is going to change the dynamics of the ball and how the ball rolls. So it's not that you can't put it below the fingers, but really the span does come into play on that. Correct. Uh, from Michael Bowen, I have a Skyrocket, a Brunswick Twisted Fury, a Shout, Hammer Black Urethane. So some weak, weaker balls. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to see more here. Um, I have... Uh, 
What should I consider? Okay, he's got all those bowling balls. What should I consider? I have a high rev rate and medium speed. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you. It sounds like you've got a lot of, I mean, weaker equipment. Right, right. I would maybe so look maybe to... Maybe just a small notch up. What do you think, Anthony? Like uh, small notch up. Skyrocket, there. Twisted Fury Shout. Probably something solid. You could go with something maybe like a Haywire. I mean, that'd probably be the strongest bowling ball I'd recommend. It's a strong cover. Pretty strong cover. It's pretty strong cover. Medium, medium diff, medium RG. Nothing too crazy. Um, maybe like a GB2 Phenom. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, GB2 Phenom, yeah, something like breaker. that. Yeah, Game Breaker. Any of the Game Breaker series bowling balls, those and, are pretty and, good. Yeah, I, I, I think those would fit because, you know, if you're looking for something a little bit stronger uh, than what you already have, and there are times if, if you're going to bowl some tournaments, especially, you know, if you're bowling league and you're bowling in one center, um, you know, you're, you're going to have four or five balls, I'm going to tell you, that, that that's more than more than enough. Um, Anthony, again, we're in the pro shop business. We love when you want to come in and drill a ball, and you should keep those covers fresh. But honestly, you know, unless you're going to bowl some tournaments, you know, three, four balls really is more than enough. So depending on what you're looking for, you know, the balls that you have are what we consider on the lower end or weaker end, you know, one step up, you know, something like, you know, what we talked about with that Game Breaker 2 mm -hmm. or, or, or something like that. Yeah, and, it, and, then, and then at that point, if you feel that they're too strong, that's where surface adjustments come in. You know, even... Uh, you know, I know you said haywire, but even a high wire is going to be stronger. Than yeah, true, true. Yeah. You know, even a high wire is going to be stronger than what he has. Then, yeah, definitely than a skyrocket and Correct. twist of fury and all that good stuff. Correct. That'd probably be a good something something good to add as arsenal. Yeah. Um, did you want to touch on anything else, John? I think that's quite a bit of information. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I know it can be confusing. But the basic idea is to start to understand the terminology a little bit better. Again, radi RG, radius of gyration. The lower that RG number, the closer it is to that 246, 248 number, it's going to roll sooner. The medium RG in the low 250s, you know, and then you get, high, you get higher than that, and that's the higher RG. So the lower RG is going to roll a little bit sooner, the higher RG is going to push down the lane. And again, layouts, you know, we can tweak those layouts, but don't get so enamored with layouts all the time. Find a couple layouts that work for you and then stick with them, and then find the right core. Differential. Maximum differential number is 060. So anything in that, you know, that 053 or 054 and higher, all the way to 060, that ball's going to flare quite a bit. It is going to, when it gets down the lane, that makes that angle, it makes it a stronger angle down the lane. It reads the friction down the lane quicker. It is also harder to control. Okay, so the more differential, the more it flares, the more unstable it is, the more angularity it's going to have down the lane. Doesn't necessarily mean a good thing, okay, because it can be too angular and very hard to control. You have to take what you're bowling on from what your ball speed is, what your rev rate is, what your rotation is. This is where your pro shop technician at, at, at your home local center can really help you. Or again, if you ever have any questions, please you know, send them to me uh, right here through the coaching corner. Um, jgames at bowlersmart.com on Facebook. I'll be happy to answer the questions. Same here. And any questions that don't get answered on the live feed, John is pretty good about going back through there. So if you guys don't want to fire in, go for it. And... And John's a busy man, but I know he can get back to you as quick absolutely, as possible. Absolutely. So again, um, we'll be back next Thursday, and we'll you know pick another topic. Um, if anybody wants a specific topic covered, please just send me a message, and, and we'll do the best that we can do in, in covering those topics. Uh, again, please visit bowersmark.com. Uh, we have a fantastic website. Uh, some awesome deals going on. We have some great deals for Black Friday. Uh, yeah, and now Cyber it's Monday, yeah, right? and now we got some stuff. stuff going on. I think till the end of December and for we Christmas. Some, so you know, some some holiday specials going on there. Uh, we have 40 locations across the country also to serve your you know, your bowling needs. Um, so if uh, no more questions, again, appreciate everybody's time. If if you want to send me something later, I'd be happy to answer it. Thanks guys, Come appreciate out. it. If you're ever in the Merritt Island area, again, our stores are fantastic. Nancy's doing a great job here at uh, Shore Lane. Uh, Appreciate everybody hanging out. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you soon.